Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, last Sussex Squad roundup of the year, so let's get going. Top news story of the week, Ghislaine Maxwell has been found guilty on five out of six counts for sex trafficking. To me, this just isn't enough. There is a master list of rich and powerful people connected to Maxwell and Epstein. And so as far as I'm concerned, everyone should be called to the stand for questioning. There is a huge black book of names that need to be investigated. And I think they should have to take the stand and prove their innocence. They are protecting Andrew, who is probably sweating up a brand new pool in the palace. And the powers that be, I feel, are protecting him to protect others. And I don't think we'll ever really get to the bottom of this unless the 99% of the people do something really drastic, which I won't say here because the censors will probably kick me off. But to me, I just don't see that the court of justice, which has probably been corrupted by the rich and powerful, is going to get to the bottom of this case. If anything happens to Maxwell, you know, she accidentally slips on a banana and cracks her skull, or the dog that ate my homework also mauls her to death or something. You can't tell me that it's not suspicious because we know that there was something off about the way Epstein died. Moving on, I want to be the fly on the wall of the palaces yesterday because ain't nobody knew the tea was going to be served the way it was. I went to bed tired. I was so tired. Well, a few popular non-UK publications have picked up on the whole hashtag Prince William affair trending and are writing about it again. I also just want to point out because many people have accused the squad of spreading false rumours, the palace took out an injunction and I may actually do a short summary video of the legalities of an injunction because being granted one is not easy and also breaking an injunction also has very serious consequences like seizing of property and assets so the UK press even if they want to aren't going to talk openly about Willie's Willie or Nilly Nilly. Also in Meghan Markle One News, non-UK media outlets have continued to highlight the fact that the Daily Fail apologised to Meghan, proving once again that people are no longer towing the line for the British media. In fact, they're feeling more free than ever to mock it. And why not when it's good for their clicks and business? The British press wanted to profit off of hate for Meghan, and now the non-British press are profiting off of the British tabloids' losses. And I'm here for it. Meanwhile, in Ingerland, there is footage going around of a Queen's guard walking over a kid. Now, they claim they went back and checked up on him, but I have seen no footage of that. Regardless, this is still pretty bad. They could have gone around him. This was a very secure environment. I know that they usually give warnings before the guards come out, but come on, get out of here with your protocol BS and just walk around the kid. They were not protecting anyone here. They're just putting on a show for the tourists and I think this is just vile. And over in Montecito, Harry and Meghan are continuing to prove who the most popular royals are. Their Christmas card generated more social media engagement in 48 hours than the Cambridges did in the seven days that it was posted. Someone put the number of likes side by side that the two cards received across social media and the difference is staggering. People love this couple and the more of them that we get to see and hear from, the more it chips away at the lies of the smear campaign against Meghan. Tell me again how Harry and Meghan are irrelevant, especially when the British news media have showbiz correspondents reporting from Montecito. Like, why is this necessary for you to do for people you claim that no one has any interest in? You have a whole family, a whole clan on this side of the ocean and you're reporting on Harry and Meghan in Montecito. And to be honest, there wasn't really much to report on because no one knows what they get up to because there's no leaks from Montecito. So you're standing around to say what exactly? I don't know. It's weird. On to some more solemn news, the great Desmond Tutu sadly passed away. The Sussexes did release a statement offering their condolences as I'm sure we can all remember. Archie met Arch and Tutu gave him a sweet kiss. Imagine Archie being like 18 years old and seeing that sweet picture. That kid is blessed. And this is the picture that Sky News actually used during um, their report. And every royal household except for the Cambridges as of making this video have given a tribute to Desmond Tutu. No surprises there. 
someone else who passed away quietly and sadly did not get enough coverage and I want to pay my respects to her is the black feminist author Bell Hooks. Bell Hooks work is something that I reference often to give me guidance and help me organise my thoughts. I am so grateful that God gave her life and life gave her time to put her ideas and writings into the world. The focus of Hooks writing was the intersectionality of race, capitalism and gender and what she described as the ability to produce and penetrate systems of oppression and class domination. She published more than 30 books and numerous scholarly articles appeared in documentary films and participated in public lectures. As an academic, she taught at many institutions including Stanford University, Yale University and the City College of New York and later founded the Bell Hooks Institute. She sadly died of a kidney failure on December 15th. A great thinker and an amazing brave woman, rest in peace Bell Hooks, a legend. And thank you for your service to literature, to black women, to all women and to all of those without a voice. Rewinding a little bit because I never made a video about it, the Queen gave her speech on Christmas Day and because I live to be petty about Betty and the Royals, I just had to point out that she got 9 million views. Not bad, but nothing compared to the 17 million that Harry and Meghan got for the ITV interview. And that's just the UK figures. Harry and Meghan's interview premiered to over 21 million viewers in the US, making it the ninth most watched event of 2021. The other top 10 were only made up of sporting events. For the Queen's speech, they were smart enough to make sure that there were no golden pianos in the room, but the whole damn room was golden. So in Camilla Tomini news, Camilla Tomini is still a liar and will likely never stop being one. She wrote this really strange article where she basically tells a lie and then justifies it by saying, well, it sounds believable, so what the heck, who cares? Basically shoving it in our faces that she doesn't care about the truth and this is why I stay calling these people royal rodents, because they are nothing but gossip writers, pirates with press cards and mouthpieces for the palace, a carnival of so-called experts. The good thing is that even non-squaddies were calling her out for it and Camilla Tomini is a liar actually started trending on Twitter. I think that Camilla is trying to position herself as some kind of provocative personality, seeing as that it is a very profitable career option nowadays and eventually we're going to have to deny her of clicks and views and attention because as the squad gets more powerful the more people fight for our attention and we have to balance when we do and don't give these people attention. Let's not do a Ray J and make this fool famous. So when the story about British politicians parting at Christmas came out, it was announced that Simon Case, who also once worked for the Cambridges, was going to investigate the whole debacle. Well, it turns out that his office was also involved in a breach of the rules holding a small gathering when they were banned. It really says a lot about British politics that these are the people who are running things, people that were spin doctors for the Cambridges and attempted to make the Sussexes look bad. And there seems to be blank silence from the British public who are either unaware, distracted or both and don't really understand just how dirty British politics has become and the revolving door between British politics, the British press and the royal family. This is a case of foxes investigating the crime scene where they stole the chickens. That's what we have in British politics right now. But he is now gone and we have one other casualty in the list of people who tried to destroy Meghan. The dominoes keep falling although I'm sure he'll probably be picked up for another government post at some point. But it's not just British officials who are breaking lockdown rules. Over in Denmark, the Dutch royal family expressed regret after it invited a reported 21 people to celebrate the 18th birthday of Princess Amalia, the future queen. One rule for them, another rule for us. Let's bring it back to the UK. One thing that never ceases to get on my nerves is how Meghan's accomplishments are either diminished or when they're talked about portrayed in a way that paints her as a tryhard or attention seeking instead of a person with a strong work ethic who has earned her flowers. But the unmelanated Duchess tinkled a few notes on the piano and people went wild. What's interesting is that no one is asking where this talent suddenly came from and if she had it prior to this. Why have we never seen it? A future queen consort who can play the piano is actually pretty cool. It actually shows some personality and individuality. Took 10 whole years, but so did five questions. So 
Considering the pace at which the monarchy moves, this is progress. But you know, that would overshadow the others, right? If Kate showed too much personality. That's why we can't showcase talents in this family. That's why Meghan was told to be 50% of herself and even at 50% she was still putting in some amazing work. The interesting thing is that the segment was actually pre-recorded and not part of the live Carol show so they obviously wanted to make it look like it was part of the concert because she wore the same red coat and did her hair and makeup the same but people quickly picked up on this because you don't see any panning to the audience during the performance. The Together at Christmas Carol concert got just over a million views. William really thought he was doing something, moving the show from the BBC. And I say William because I 100% believe that it was him who was peed off about that documentary. I'm certain that it would have gotten more views if it was aired on the BBC. So that's all for this Sussex Squad news roundup. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And just as a reminder, I am having a New Year's Day quiz. So please join me for some Sussex trivia. It's going to be a hoot. Grab a notepad and pour your favourite drink and let's unwind. And let's start the year on a fun and positive note. See you later, my lovelies. Ciao.